I just really think that we are this moment where it's likely that in the next few years we're going to start see a digital, seeing a digital population. Let's start this from the beginning. Some of you may already know my story, but I started coding when I was 10 years old because I watched a specific film, fell in love with a specific talking computer, and wanted to build one for myself. I just was fixated on how we interact with computers. This is something that I know is now just part of me. It's not just a, like a fixation for a few years. It's not a phase. It's not a phase, mom. It has become part of me. And then just over a year ago, I started documenting uh, building Jarvis from Iron Man on TikTok. This completely changed the scope of the project, but also what this actually might mean, what this technology might mean for others other than just me. But these days I'm working on something pretty cool. So I've grown my TikTok to a million followers over the last just over a year and my YouTube has actually doubled in size even, even though it's like tiny compared to my TikTok. During that year, I was just like bombarded with messages bombarded with people that wanted to know how to build Jarvis, wanted to know how to build talking characters in video games, in VR, in their apps, in uh, uh, online games, mobile games, like a lot of gaming stuff. But what was most interesting was the amount of people that were approaching me about virtual and augmented reality, which is just something I didn't immediately put in the same room was this technology and like Alexa and Jarvis and those sort of systems. So it got me thinking, and around the same time, I uh, reached out to one of my followers, Danny. Met up in London, we immediately hit it off. We were, we had the same vision of the future. We followed each other around London, hyped up on coffee, um, and we kind of hopped between coffee bars, and we discussed our vision of the future. That really was a special day because I think it was the first time that I had sat down with someone who could see the future exactly as I saw it, but from a practical point of view, somebody who actually wanted to execute on that vision rather than just dream about it. That, really, that is where the Carter story begins. The main idea was to provide an API for developers to be able to integrate like conversational AI into their projects. And initially we didn't know what market we wanted to do this in. We knew we didn't want to be a chatbot company, that was for certain. So we didn't want to do marketing, we didn't want to do um, like sales assistants and things like that. We wanted to do something new to actually move the industry forward. We didn't want to be a cookie cutter business. And we wanted to have more of a community focus where we were building more of a project than a business initially, just to get something off of the ground. And so we started a Discord server, we started researching different industries, and I started trawling through literally thousands of conversations I've had over the last year with people messaging me on Instagram, on TikTok, email, just looking at what people wanted. And then after that, we put a poll out to my audience asking them what they wanted and they all wanted basically to build either their own voice assistants or to put this stuff in games and so we picked gaming and we launched carter api he did this like within weeks uh, i was up all night coding for weeks pulling things together to try and get some sort of conversational ai product up that people could use for free completely bootstrapped no investment just literally this laptop was what was used to build it at first. And so now we're six weeks in, and I think it's good to like have a review of like how far we are, where we're going, what we're trying to do to try and like provide some transparency, but also to get it out of my head so that it's there in video format. So we're still in beta, and the idea initially was to be like the AWS for conversational AI characters, where you could just, if you're a developer, let's say you have a game and you have 50 NPCs, and you want people to be able to literally walk up to the NPCs in the video game and just start talking to them, well then you could use Carter to spin up 50 NPCs that were unique personalities, they all had their own backstory, they all had their own names and interests and history, and they would remember you. And that was the, that's the dream, that's the dream. So we wanna become like an AWS for conversational AI. But what we've learned over the last six weeks is that actually game creators especially, they wanna be able to steer the conversation. Like they don't want just this AI that might say anything at any point. They wanna be able to steer the conversation 
but also there's a huge opportunity to make that character actually matter more in the storyline. So like you can have a conversation with a character and then because of that conversation, something actually happens in the game or in the VR experience or whatever it is that is being built. And so we came up with this idea of custom triggers. You would basically teach agents this pattern recognition of different phrases and you could trigger things to happen. So if you're building a voice assistant, maybe you can teach it to recognize when you're asking for the weather, but also maybe you could teach it to pass you the sword when you ask for the sword in your favorite video game. And so this was, this was kind of an awesome little tiny feature at the time, but over the last six weeks, it's become very clear that the conversational steering of Carter API, especially through our no code dashboard has, which is, all in beta, like it's all in beta, we cobbled it together to get something out there to get people conversing. We've now, we've got about 20,000 API calls over the last six weeks. Um, we've, we're staggering people in, we're letting people into the beta um, just so that we can manage server cost. But it is incredible what people are already building with this. So in the Discord, we've got about 500 people. Technically, all of them could have access to the server at one point, but what we're doing is we're reaching out to those people one by one and like onboarding them onto the platform. And we really haven't started pushing this out too much because we want to learn from these conversations. And then when we're ready to properly launch, we're gonna pull it out of private beta and go into early access, which I'm really excited for. Our learnings from the last six weeks are, have really solidified into the version one. We consider ourselves in version zero right now, but like version one or 0.5, um, is going to be very different. We're gonna design the interface differently. We're gonna introduce a few more concepts so that you can really mold an agent um, and its personality in a given scene in a game or whether it's a completely open conversation with our experimental modules. Um, I'm super excited about that. And there's also some incredible things happening in the industry with OpenAI's Whisper, which is just this incredible voice recognition technology. And I just really think that we are this moment where it's likely that in the next few years, we're gonna start see a digital, seeing a digital population. We're gonna start seeing these simulated um, characters that have persistent memory over time that remember you when you re-enter the game in a month's time. They remember who you were and what you were talking about last time, just like talking to a person. And so we also have some other things that we're working on all around psychology and um, how does an agent lead the conversation and what questions can you ask and when and, and like what are the best things to ask that human from the agent's point of view in order to grow the relationship between the human and the character. And so I'm just super, super pumped about the next few weeks. The community in Discord has really been the center of this project. I'm so pumped and it's also the thing that keeps us focused is we can reach out to this super uh, active community of these early pioneers that are using Carter API already in their games and their apps and their Python projects. It's just incredible to see all the different use cases. We even have people ironically now looking at using the technology to build better customer support systems and things like that. So I'm, I'm like super pumped and this is the first ever update video. Like I'm just so excited. I hope that you can tell. And so if you want to be part of the beta, there is a link down below. It's good to sort of get this off my chest. We are gonna grow and we're gonna get momentum. So if you wanna be part of the community, if you're a developer, a game designer, um, an app builder, whatever, join the Discord. We would love to see you there. We'd come and hang out, come and try the product. It is free, we have a free tier um, that is really generous. You can build something with Carter at no cost at all. And it's only really when you scale that there is a cost, which is just an awesome business model. And that's another thing that we've changed in the last few months, which is like, we've changed our business model because of the feedback from the community and because of what we've seen other businesses uh, in the industry doing uh, and failing at. And you know, the, the, the certain models that are in the market at the moment are actually restricting the growth of the companies because it incentivizes developers to not build stuff that is successful and so yeah we've we've even done work with the business model as well i'm, I'm super pumped about that um but really we're still in this stage of learning from conversation trying to get as many api calls 
as possible good quality conversations happening between humans and agents in whatever context. And we're gonna use that information to train agents even better down the line. So if you wanna help us out, we would love to see you in Discord. See you there.